Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode, guys. Now, I had a bit of a disaster. I'd recorded an episode that was going to go up on Tuesday, and in that episode, we went and we landed on Minmus, which is the further out ice moon of Kerbin. You can see the landing site there. But the footage was lost, so I can't show you guys. Um, we went, we landed, we got surface sample and some signs and came back and we unlocked quite a few texts with that science actually. We got heavy and heavier rocketry to get some larger engines. We got fuel systems which gives us fuel lines which is brilliant. We got advanced construction and more importantly we got docking ports which means we can make satellites that we can actually dock on and refuel with which makes it so much easier to go out to other planets. But I didn't want to just leave out this whole mission so I thought I'll go in, I'll use the exact same ship, I'll load up Minmus Mission 1 and I'll do a replica. Obviously we'll get a bit less science because it's repeating experiments but it means you guys get to see what I did and I felt that was a good thing to do. So this is the ship we used, it had this landing stage with the solid boosters and the rockets, then a transition stage with three rockets, and finally the lander that would also return us back home to Kerbin. And I think I'm just going to set off, I'm not going to make any changes or add anything new, so you can see how I would have, well, how I did do it the first time. So I'm going to jump up to two times speed here, just so you don't have to watch me floating around in space for too long. And I quickly sort out the staging because it went a bit funny when I loaded the save of this ship. So I check that everything's in the right place and it isn't, so I fix it all. And after that, it's time to blast off. Which I think is going to happen now. Yes, there we go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lower the throttle because I want our speed to be, or velocity to be constantly increasing through the work done by these solid boosters. But I don't want it to increase so much that when I drop them, I start to slow down because my other engines can't handle it. So I want to get the right point that we drop them like this and our speed doesn't drop. I don't know if you saw it there because in the two times speed it's quite quick, but it drops only around one or two meters per second before it starts to increase. So that was almost perfectly efficient transfer, which is what you want, so that you save as much fuel as you can in that solid booster stage to use now once they've been dropped. So I start to turn over, I go to 22.5 degrees to the east, um, as I hit into this second lighter, uh, darker even blue middle section of the atmosphere gauge at the top there. And then again, as we start to hit halfway there, I turn over 45 degrees burning. There's a lot of thrust with all these seven engines at the bottom there, so getting quite a quick as uh, um, ascent into orbit here. Checking the fuel, it's going quite well. What I forget to check is the height of my apoapsis, because ideally I want it to be around 100k. But I'm waiting now, dropping this into transition stage. Bit of an explosion, but everything seems to be in one piece. Now I remember to check, and we're almost double what height we actually want to be. Which isn't ideal, but it shouldn't make too much of a difference. It just means, well, it just means we wasted a tiny bit of fuel, but we can live with that. So I time warp up agonizingly slowly to our 200,000, I believe it is, meter high apoapsis. Getting up here might even be kilometer high. No, that can't be right. Surely it must be meters. Who knows? Anyway, booster now to circularize our orbit, burning prograde. You can see it going up fairly rapidly now, so we do have a decent bit of thrust and we are fairly high up, which is very good. So once I circularise this and get the periapsis up to around 150k, it is meters, I knew it was meters, I set Minmus as a target and aim to hit where that dotted line is because that is the intercept point where my orbit and Minmus's orbit is at the same angle. It's like where they cross over, if you imagined them looking horizontally at it. And I do a manoeuvre node and manage to get, with only one manoeuvre node, a contact, which is exactly what we want. So I time warp around to our manoeuvre node and I burn in that direction. It's a very nice and easy 
way to get there because normally I have to do a whole load of adjustments before I actually get into getting into the sphere of influence of Minmus. So this is very nice. It's what we want in a mission. Everything to go just as planned. So lowering the throttle so I don't overshoot. We get our contact there. And now we can just time warp up and into it. Nice and simple, nothing going wrong. This is what you want in a mission, really. Everything going to plan. It's very rare that my plans actually work the way I want them to, so I'm very happy that it happened to decide to do it while it's on camera. So stopping at our periapsis and burning retrograde, you can see me turning the ship round on the nav ball, getting into position, and I burn retrograde to slow down our velocity and get us into an orbit. So you can see me do that here. And it's a bit of a crazy incline, but that's not too much of a worry, really, because we're going to be going down and landing on it. So I try to set Minmus as our um, our perspective and accidentally go onto our landing site. So I switch back and then I manage to set it, I think. Come on, come on. There we go. Focus, Minmus. So now I can actually see what I'm doing. I lower this periapsis until we have a nice collision. And then, after quick saving to make sure it doesn't go horribly, horribly wrong, it's time to go and actually try and do this. So, going back and actually looking at our ship so we can see how close we are to the planet. It's not the nicest looking planet, is it? This big ball of ice. A bit more interesting than the Grey Dome Moon, that's for sure. But still, there's some more interesting, colourful fins to come if we carry on this series, which I certainly hope that we will. So, time warping down. When I get to around 8,000, I start to burn to remove our horizontal velocity as much as possible. And once we get down to a low horizontal velocity, I start to tackle the vertical. Because I don't want to be skidding along the floor, I can burn more when I get lower down to control my vertical speed. It's the horizontal I wanted to cancel out. So, just like I said, we go down lower, then we burn to fix up our, our vertical speed. And we're not in the best of places, are we, guys? It's a bit of a hill here. So I try to slow down as much as I can and angle the ship so that it's not drifting horizontally too much and so that we land on our legs. And as you can see, what happens... We're down to normal speed now. The video's no longer sped up. And we bounce and stop to flip, which isn't good. So I use the torque on the ship, manage to clip the legs, and using all that torque from our inline reaction wheel, we managed to get up and stay up. We managed to actually not fall over. That's a first for this series. A non-sidewards landing. That's what we like to see, isn't it, guys? So sticking the SAS on to make sure the ship doesn't fall over once I EVA out, we can start to do some science. Hooray! That's what it's all about, isn't it, guys? So going into the, I can't even remember what's called, Materials Bay? I think it's called Materials Bay. Going into Materials Bay, doing a bit of science, observing the mystery goo. Getting that. Now a crew report. Getting that. All the usual, so I start to EVA for the EVA report. And the gravity is so light here, I actually have to use my jetpack to control me going around. I don't even have to jump which is very nice. So, EVA report, surface sample, and of course, we have to plant a flag so we can remember that we've been here. And in times to come, we can look back fondly on the second Minmus mission. And I believe I actually name it something along those lines. Can't actually remember. Second, oh, that's it. Second time's the charm. At least I hope so. I hope this footage stays loaded and doesn't crash horribly on me. You never know, there might be a couple more flags here if it takes a couple more attempts. But we'll get a video out definitely. So, you know, like this video if it manages to actually get to your to your eyes, if I get that far without any problems. Getting a cheeky little screenshot in there. That'll be the thumbnail for this video, I think. Looks good to me. And then it's time to depart to say goodbye to Minmus. We don't have anything like rovers, so we can't go exploring really. So it's just time to go back home. Nothing more to do here, for now anyway, for now. So using that jetpack RCS to get back in the ship, 
I then take a look to see whereabouts I need to be going to hit Kerbin, and it's almost just directly straight up, which is very handy. So I do just that, burn straight off the surface, pull in those landing legs, and head back home. My throat is really dry today, don't know why that is. Not the best for recording, but meh, who cares. I'm not that professional, I don't have to do multiple takes and all that nonsense. Just go for it, why not? So, escaping the sphere of influence of Minmus, we're gonna boost around. I realise I'm still focused on Minmus, so focus now on the ship. Get up to our apoapsis, our extremely high apoapsis. Burn retrograde again to lower our periapsis and try and get ourselves a collision with Kerbin. And I get confused there and think that the moon is Kerbin for some reason. But eventually I boost all the way down into a collision course. I believe I quick save again just to make sure nothing goes horribly wrong. And boost down. And it's time to go back home, guys. Finally, another successful mission for Jabadiah Kermin. It's what we like to see, isn't it? So, boosting in, we get into re-entry, start to burn up. You can see that G-force going right up as we get into the higher gravitational field strength of Kerbin. Followed by the air resistance, burning, getting rid of some of that horizontal velocity again, and then just going purely to slow down our net velocity, releasing the parachutes and boosting down, ready to deploy into their fuel at 500, and shit. Not quite what we wanted, so we're going to quick load and pretend that that never happened, guys. You never saw it. The ship is still in one piece. So I realised that the structural integrity of this ship is not quite what it needs to be to re-enter into a planet that has a very high gravity like Kerbin. So I'm going to have to use some of this excess fuel we are carrying to slow down that velocity before the parachute fully opens so that it doesn't tear apart our ship. So, second time's the charm, that was the name, wasn't it? I think that's very fitting for this video now. So, boosting, slowing down, getting into around the height, I want to open up these outer power chutes into their small section. It's at 500 metres, they open big, so at around 1,000 metres, I slow down, stop to burn as fast as I can, lowering our velocity, and it holds, the ship is in one piece. So now it's just a case to time warp down into the sea, and to recover our vessel. It's been a mission well done. Well done, Jebediah. You made us proud once again. 30, 20, 10, 0. We're landed. And we recover the vessel. So, a very good success. Only 119. Well, only. That's still quite a lot of science. It was more last time because it was the first time we did those experiments. But still, I think I may get ladders. They're very good for exploring other planets where there's gravity and you can't boost around on your jetpack. But actually, if we have docking ports now, I want to build some infrastructure, get some satellites up that we can dock with. So it might be worth getting lights and batteries. They may be useful for building a space station so we can actually see what we're docking to. In fact, you know what? I'm almost certain that's what we should do. Yes, we can't even afford those 300 signs. So let's do it. Where is it? There it is. Let's go ourselves some batteries and some lights. So, thank you guys for watching the second attempt at this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, let me know in the comment section or that like button. And if you want to see more, again, let me know. If I see that you guys are enjoying this, I'll keep doing it. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, guys.